This is a thinking question. At 12 noon, a coast guard at point O observes a ship with position vector 1410 kilometers related to its position. The ship is moving at a steady speed of 12 kilometers per hour at a bearing of 300 degrees. Find the time when the ship is due north of the coast guard. So I'd like you to now pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestions, right? Okay, so let's try to understand the situation here. So what we have is everything in the positive quadrant, okay. So we are not making it to the scale, but we're saying that uh, we'll make it approximate. So the ship is moving in the direction which is bearing of 300. So from here, if you see 300, will be just as we did last time, right? So it will be kind of like this, right? Uh, so it is, uh, this is 30 degrees, right? 270 plus 30 gives you 300, right? So that is the direction in which the ship is moving. But what we are given here is that the initial position is given to us and which is 1410. So it is moving parallel to this direction, you understand. And this position here is given to us as, we can write position vector 1410 where this is origin. Is that clear to you? Now, the ship is moving at a steady speed of 12 kilometers per hour at the bearing of 300. We have sketched all this. Find the time when the ship is due north of Coast Guard. So due north of Coast Guard means we want to find this point, right? Find the time when it is at this point. So we need to find this time. I hope the, the question is absolutely clear now, right? So, so you can still pause the video and now do the question. Perfect. Okay. So here, let's try to figure out the uh, velocity or the position vector, basically. So we can actually find the position vector. So position will be uh, initial position plus uh, time times velocity as we wrote initially, right? So we can say R is equal to the initial position of uh, 1410 plus T times the velocity which is given to us as 12 kilometers per hour at a bearing of 300 correct so so now you understand we did this uh, just now let's redo right okay so then we'll fill this up and then probably we'll get our time uh, and then the solution correct so we need to convert 12 kilometers per hour at a bearing of uh, uh, 300 so let's write this uh, vector okay so we have we we'll write this in the form of AI we, because we need to write this, right? In the form of AI plus BJ. That's kind of important to us, right? So let's do this. Okay. So we have 12 kilometers. The I component will be cosine of 30 degrees, but negative, right? So, so we can write velocity as equal to 12 cos of 30 degrees, right? So that is the 30 degrees. Minus sign because it's acting in this direction. I, correct? Plus upwards, we have sine of 30 degrees. Minus, I'm oh, sorry. 12 sine of 30 degrees, correct? Okay. So, so this factor is 30 square root 3 over 2. I, and this is half, right? So it is 12 times half. Or you could write this as minus 6 square root 3i plus 6. Get it? So that becomes your V. So I'm going to place this value right there now. Is that clear to you? So we have this as uh, minus 6 square root 3 comma 6. So that is why we did earlier few questions. It helped us to understand the strategy, right? So that becomes your position.
perfect. So we wrote the velocity in terms of uh, i and j components. Now we have a plot here, right? So it is x and y where displacement is clearly seen, right? Okay. Now the question is, find the time when ship is due north. Now when ship is due north at this position, then what happens? Then the x value becomes 0, right? So we say, this is very important to understand, right? So when ship is due north, in that case, what happens? In that case, the x value, which is uh, 14 minus 6 square root 3t, that should be equal to 0. Do you see that? Because the position, I could actually write R also like this. Uh, the uh, It is 14 minus uh, 6 square root 3t, comma, 10 plus 60. Do you see that? So that is the vector, correct? So that should be 0. So from here, we can find the time. So we can get the time t as equal to 14 over 6 square root 3. Does make sense to you? Right? So that is how we can get time and the units will be hours. So now let's finally use calculator. So we have 14 divided by within bracket let me write 6 uh, square root 3. Okay. And that is equal to in decimals. 1.347 1 point so one hours one and a half hour you can say okay so 0 0.34 so we can say we can convert this so we have uh, time as equal to one hour and and uh, 0.34 times 60 so 0 0.347 times 60 equals to 21 minutes let's say 21 minutes is it clear so that is how we could actually solve this so we found this 21 minutes by multiplying 0 0.347 by 60 correct which is 21 so so that is how we are going to solve this question does it make sense to you now there could be extension to this question now tell me what will this signify at at t equal to let me write this number which is 14 over 6 square root 3 what will the y component signify what will uh, let's say we have written this in the form of a plus b i a i plus b j so in that case, what will B signify? Can you tell me that? What will the what will 10 plus 6 T signify? So that is a question for you now. Okay. Anyway, so, so what we have learned here is that this concept of splitting velocity into its components really help us to solve many questions. This is one of the examples. Feel free to explore and I'll provide you with links where we'll do more kinematics uh, which will give you good insight to this concept. Right, so that's it for now. I hope it helps. You may subscribe to my videos and keep posting questions. Thank you and all the best.